As you might have guessed from the title of this video, lightning struck very near my house. Did my DIY solar generator survive? Join me, I will show you where the lightning struck, what happened to my DIY solar generator, attempts I made to fix it, and the steps I've taken so hopefully this will never happen again. If you've seen the video where I built this 24 volt DIY solar generator, then what you've seen in that video versus what I have now looks different. That nice sun gold inverter charger has been powering many things in my house for over a year and performing very well without any issues. Well, that is until Thursday night, about a month ago, we had a severe thunderstorm go through the area in the middle of the night for a couple of hours around 2 a.m. where there was huge lightning strikes. They sh it shook the entire house. I eventually fell back asleep, but when I woke up in the morning, my wife said the lights weren't working. We then found that the TV and the internet wasn't working. I immediately knew it was those same circuits that I powered with this DIY solar generator. So I went out to the garage, found that the inverter was off. The switch was turned on, but it wasn't working. I tried to turn it off and back on, but it would only power up for like three to five seconds. Nothing would show on the screen, but, but the backlight would turn on and then it'd turn off. No matter what I did, that's all it would ever do. So I went over the transfer switch. I turned on grid power to those circuits. So now we had power to everything in the house. I uh, ended up taking down the inverter and opening it up. And this is what I found. Black burn marks inside the case, a uh, couple of MOSFETs, MOSFETs that had exploded. Uh, yes, the lightning strike had burned up this inverter charger. So the morning of the storm, I'm checking the mail and I come out and find bark, tree bark, all over my driveway. And there's more all the way over there in the yard. So I'm thinking, where is this bark coming from? I scan around and I find the source of it. It's on this tree here. So the lightning struck this tree and as I guess it was coming down, it blew all that bark off all the way across my front yard. The tree is very close to my house and the garage is where I have my DIY solar generator. There's no sound on this video footage, but this is the footage from my front doorbell camera of what I believe to be the actual lightning strike. Uh, the tree that it hit is just off camera to the left. Uh, but I, I've watched a dozen of these video clips for the screen all lit up like this, but this was the brightest one. So I'm guessing this was the actual strike. Nothing on the DC side of my solar system was damaged, but as the morning went on, I found a few other things on the AC side that were not working. I had two of these network switches that were destroyed. I also found that the ethernet port on my TV was not working. Thankfully, I was able to get the TV to connect through a wireless connection. And I ordered these two, v, these two replacement network switches, and we are now back in business with TV and internet. And thankfully to this point, that is the only damage I've found. I do have grid power, but I wanted to get the solar back up and working as soon as possible. Uh, I plan to just get something quickly, and I did a little research, and I ended up getting this Gendel 24 volt, 3000 watt inverter. It doesn't have a built-in charger like the Sun Gold did, so I don't have a separate charge right now, except for the solar charge controllers. And I'm back up and running again on solar. But what I view, what I, I, I view what I have now running as a temporary solution. I want to get either that Sun Gold inverter fixed, or choose something new. I first reached out to Sun Gold Power and sent them pictures of the damage. They replied quickly and said that the only thing they could do is sell me replacement boards, which would cost me about a total of around $500. Uh, and there's no guarantee that would even fix it. Uh, so a brand new unit, if I just bought a brand new one, would cost somewhere between $900 and $1,000 depending on if there was some kind of sale going on or not. So I talked this over with a friend and I decided I would just try to replace those damaged MOSFET, those transistors. It's the only visual damage and they were very accessible. However, that is not something I have ever tried to do. The, the, solder, the soldering work is so intricate. I've never done anything that intricate like that. So I decided that I would have a local repair shop, electrical repair shop look at it. Uh, they looked at it and said they have no experience with inverters, but they might be able to fix it. They were able to replace, I mean, locate those replacement MOSFETs online. They said if they could get it working, they charged me $200. If they could not get it working, they would charge me nothing. I had nothing to lose, so I gave them the shot. So while they were working on the inverter, I decided I wanted to see what I could do to prevent this from happening again. I did a little research and found that these, these surge protectors here from Midnight Solar and EMP Shield, 
they appear to be very popular. The reviews are good and uh, they seem like a solid choice. But I decided to first contact my electrician and get his opinion. He suggested a whole home surge protector uh, that he typically installs. Apparently, most new homes have similar surge protectors already by electrical code. Because my home is older, the code back then did not require it, so I don't have anything like that. So he also suggested, suggested not only the surge protector in the, in the electrical box, but also I could protect my HVAC units outside. He said he's seen several of those destroyed. So he was only charging $500 to protect my main panel inside for all my circuits, my HVAC units outside, 500 parts and labor. I decided to go ahead and let him do the job. He said that um, the local power company will charge 500, over $500 to install just that one surge protector in the main panel, and they don't even protect the HVAC units. So I decided to let him go into it. Here's the main panel inside where he installed the surge protector inside. As long as that green light's working, should be protected. So here are my two HVAC units. One on the right's downstairs and the left one's just a compressor for upstairs. But here's my main box. And this is where he's installed the surge protectors. The, about, the box outside is just the main breaker for the panel inside and then these two units here. So to protect these two units, he installed these two surge protectors. As long as the green light's working, it's being protected. So I decided to do uh, some basic lightning protection coming from my solar panels into my charge controllers. So I had these little boxes here already, these little combiner boxes, and I bought them like a year ago and they've just been sitting there. I finally decided to install them. I uh, originally planned on putting these in separate locations, and so that's the reason there's two boxes. Uh, you, I could have just bought one that had two PV sources and that way I could just had one box, but I already had these so I decided to use them. So how these work are, well there's two functions really I guess. They're weatherproof boxes and they have a breaker here where I can turn off the uh, solar panels from out here. And also there's a surge protector here. So if there is a sudden surge from the panels like from a strike or, so, or some kind, uh, it will send that, it will send the surge into the ground there. On that, I have an iron pipe there. And if you can see, there's a little green, it's not lights, but there's a little green uh, inside those little, inside the surge protectors there. If there is a strike and they uh, send the surge to the ground, they will turn red and will need to be replaced. So that's just a little basic lightning protection that I did here for my solar panels. Hopefully this will help. Oh, and by the way, I now have two of these mobile solar arrays giving me 1600 watts. After about a week after dropping off the inverter at the repair shop, they called and said they they have replaced those MOSFETs and they believe they may have fixed it. They said the ratings look good. They did not have a 24 volt source to actually test it with, assuming they were just using the equipment they had to test the circuitry on the board directly. I hauled over this heavy 24 volt, 4 volt battery and uh, to the shop and tested it. Unfortunately, it did not work. They said they would try again. They would take the boards off, inspect them closely, replace anything they find. And after about a couple of weeks, they called and said they didn't find anything to replace, but they did reseat some things that seemed suspicious. So I hauled the battery back over there again and tested it, but sadly, it still did not work. They had at that point officially thrown in the towel and they charged me nothing. Uh, there must be something inside the inverter that's burned up that you just can't see. I'm definitely not an expert on lightning protection. I just want to show you in this video what I have went through and what I did to hopefully protect against another lightning strike. My electrician said nothing will survive a direct hit, but what he installed should help protect against a nearby strike like what we had. Hey, if you're not a subscriber already, hit that subscribe button so you can see what I decide to do next. Well, I guess I'll do it for this video. Thanks for watching.